Hey guys, it's Dave from the Install Bay. We're going to show you how to put a radio on this here BMW 328i using a pack interface and a Best Kits dash kit. So stay tuned. So to start with, what we want to do is pull the air conditioner out first. Um, when you're pulling it out, you'll notice that this front piece will want to separate from the control center, so you got to push back a little bit further. There's essentially a clip here and a clip here and some down in the bottom that hold it in place. So get yourself a panel tool and, you know, go at it. Then once you get it out, go ahead and unplug it. And as you can see what we were talking about here, here's, here's the little clips that are on either side, and then there's a couple on the bottom here. Now there's two Phillips head screws right here to remove this. Go ahead and pull those. So once you've unplugged the antenna, if you saw our previous video on how to test these radios for uh, amplified antenna through the center pin, you're going to want to do that. Go ahead and turn the car on. All right, so we don't get a red light, that means that there's not an amplified antenna in here, so we're golden. So one of the keys to this installation is making sure that it doesn't have the fiber optic amplifier. As you'll notice here in this harness, there is a fiber optic cable, but not all of them have a fiber optic amplifier. The amplifier is located over here. So what you want to do is just pull up on this panel right here, and the amplifier is mounted right here. So on the end of this amplifier, it just has this one plug. This plug is not the fiber optic plug, which is good for this install. If it were to have a second plug that had orange wires sticking out of it, then that would be the fiber optic. That would tell us that we can't easily replace the radio without doing something about the amplifier. So in this case, single power plug, we're golden, we can replace the radio. So for this install, we're gonna use the Pack Audio RP4.2 BMW 21. This will allow us to retain the steering wheel controls and all the little chimes and beeps and things that we need. Go ahead and unbox this. First thing you're gonna find in the box is the speaker. This is for any noises that the car makes. Um, it will come through this speaker. Next, you'll find your standard pack interface. Of course, an instruction manual. The main wiring harness. Uh, warning about the amplifier that we talked about. A main battery wire and a plug. Now, the reason why they give you this is even though the radio has a constant 12 volts in the harness, as you can see here, this yellow wire. This wire actually goes to sleep about 20 minutes after the car turns off. So if you don't run this, your radio will constantly reset. So anytime you do one of these RP4.2s or any of them that have this little dip switch area right here, the first thing you wanna do is set up for steering wheel controls, which is on page two. You just look and see which radio you have, set the dip switches accordingly. And then what we like to do is put a little piece of tape over them so that they don't get bumped or anything like that in any of the installation process. Go ahead and cover those up. So now this is all set and ready. Now you always wanna make sure you thoroughly read the instruction manual anytime you're doing one of these. Uh, they're full of notes and warnings and all kinds of stuff, so read, read it. So now what we want to do, as always, is strip all the tape off and pretty up the harness. If you notice on this, it has RCA ends because this car has an amplifier. Um, if it didn't have an amplifier, you'd simply cut these off. Um, if you were doing the fiber optic system, obviously you wouldn't need these. You could just remove them all together. Now one of the wires in this note is the brown wire. Now if you go to the brown wire in here, this is there again, the importance of reading this, uh, it says steering wheel configuration, see note four, page two. Now over here on note four, page two, it talks about uh, whether you want the steering wheel control, there's one button, the recirculation button that's on the steering wheel control. If you want that to be the recirculation button, you hook the brown wire up to constant 12 volts. 
if you want the brown wire to be a steering wheel function, so for example something like CarPlay or Android Auto, you can leave this disconnected and it will become a programmable steering wheel button. Alright, so now that we have this pretty much where it needs to be, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the Pioneer wiring harness. Alright, so wires we're not going to use. We're not going to use any of the speaker wires because this is using all the RCAs so we can separate them. We're not going to need the mute wires so we can separate those. Now that just leaves us with this guy here. So these will match up to these colors. So what we want to do first is of course cap these off so that they don't short out in the dash. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and combine the two harnesses. What we like to do is add in an accessory, a ground, and a remote turn on, just in case they ever decide to add a backup camera. Uh, since we are hooking the reverse wire up to this, it, that way we don't have to cut the harness back open again. Now a real common question we get, like for right now we're putting in the micro bypass that it needs. A lot of you guys ask, you know, how do, what do I do with all the, like the micro bypass has a ground, there's a ground coming from here, there's a ground coming from there, we're adding a ground. So yeah, all you do is you connect all the grounds together, just like we've done here. Um, the same is going to be true for the remote turn-ons, you connect all the remote turn-ons together. Now when hooking up a micro bypass or any bypass that revolves around the brake wire, you know, you have the brake wire on the unit and then you have the bypass brake wire and then you have one coming from the car. You want to make sure you disconnect the one from the car, you're not going to be using that for anything, cap it off, uh, we've already taped it off in the harness over here, and then you just hook those two wires together, that's it. So just the bypass and the input on the radio. So what we have here is a power for the camera if we ever decide to add one. In this particular vehicle we are going to be adding an amplifier so we did we have the remote turn on and of course we have the yellow wire that we're going to run back for memory to the battery. Uh, we like to add in these little connectors here so that uh, if we do need to remove it we don't have to cut a bunch of stuff apart uh, and it's no different than actually you know the plug itself we're just making our own harness. Let's talk about this little speaker here for a minute and this harness here. If you notice, they both have this cool little white end on them. It's because they go to the same place on the brain. The reason why they supply you with this speaker is not every car has the speaker built into it. So, once you've removed the lower dash, you'll notice this guy right here, this piece of foam. If you have a speaker plugged into it here, then that's what this harness is for. You can plug this in and this will go into the brain. If you don't have the speaker there, then you're gonna mount this guy here and that will take the place of the factory speaker so that you can still retain all your chimes. Okay, so they give you that little silly piece of metal, so if you work with it a little bit, you can come up with a nice mount that will hold this thing in place and won't let it roll around. Now, of course, you have to snake this up into the dash. So for this install, we're going to use the Best Kits BK BMW K320. Now inside the kit, of course, you'll find the instructions on how to remove the radio. And of course, the modifications you're going to need to make to the existing pieces. So one thing about this kit is it comes with these guys right here. These are little clips that go on to this area here. They're going to slide onto this uh, so that when the kit snaps in place, it holds it. Now, the thing we found out is these fall off. So what we like to do is put some glue on here so that these stay hopefully forever. Now go ahead and make sure you let the glue dry before you start touching it. That way you don't get muck up this nice shine that it has. Now what we want to do is remove the climate control from this plastic bezel. 
According to the instructions, there is some parts we have to remove, so we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And of course, for that, we're gonna use our sanding disc. So now what we wanna do is attach our side brackets to the radio. Now, we don't wanna go all uh, you know, tight and stuff like that. We just wanna put these on here loosely so we can adjust the radio now what we want to do is use these tabs here, okay, are going to line up into these spots here and we want to move the radio around until we have it where we think it needs to be. Now this is one of those things where you may have to do it more than once. We're going to go ahead and take the front back off now and now what we should be able to do is slide the air conditioning in. Alright, so let's go back in the car and get it ready for the test fit on this. So what we want to do is remove this housing here. And there's four T20 screws that are in our opening that need to come out. There's also two eight millimeter bolts. There's a wiring harness that runs along the top here. And there's a hook. Uh, Got to get that out of the way. You want to make sure the radio is pushed up as far as it can and also that these corners um, this is what we're test fitting here so that they don't ride into the dash you know you may have to go back and cut them a little bit now the reason I pulled these two screws out is because once we snap this in place it's gonna go in really tight and that way we can just pull the whole thing back out we're not ready for obviously the final install yet we just want to make sure that this all snaps in you know, the test fit looks good. Um, it's where it needs to be. Uh, obviously, we're gonna make sure it opens. I think we've set it back far enough to where we're not gonna have any issues there. Uh, the air conditioning, it's, it's, honestly, this is one of the nicer kits I've put in this car. Um, it looks really nice. Uh, it fits really well too, and we had to do very minimal work on it. Other than moving that wiring harness in the back and cutting that clip, that was about all we had to do to get this in. Now, keep in mind, the struggle is still not there yet because we still have to put that RP4 somewhere behind this dash. So it's it's far from over yet, but at least we know once we get it all in place, it's gonna look really nice. So for this install, we're gonna use the BAA22 antenna adapter because when we tested it, we saw that there was no accessory coming through the antenna line. If there had been, we'd use this guy here, which was the BAA DIN22. And as you can see here, it has the power lead along with the switching relay inside. Now that we have the wiring harness complete and ready to go, we want to move on to this portion of the install, which is the battery wire. This guy here has a fuse holder on it so, and a ring terminal, so this is the end that's going to go towards the rear of the car. And then this will come at the front. Now it's up to you which way you want to run it. You can either run it from the battery to the front or from the front back to the battery. That's up to you, but we're gonna go ahead and run this bad boy. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the antenna adapter, grab the main wiring harness out of the dash, go ahead and plug in our interface module. Now we have the 12 volts that we ran for the stereo. We're gonna go ahead and hook that up. All right, so at this point, what we wanna do is get the radio in and just set it in this area so that we can test to make sure everything functions the way it's supposed to. So on the steering wheel, the voice recognition, the VR button, is set up for mute. So we're going to go ahead and reprogram the module so that we can have this launch our Siri. Um, and then we'll move the buttons around like we have answer and we'll make this disconnect. Uh, so we'll have some fun with it and make the 
button's custom. In order to reprogram the steering wheel controls, on the side of the brain is a little button, and then you have this red light right here. So what you do is along with the instruction manual, you press it once, it goes green, now you have volume up, volume down, mute, skip, skip, source, track up, track down, skip, skip, answer call, press and hold, end call, voice recognition, then hit the button and it'll start flashing. Now, this allows you to do multi-function on the button, so that one time when we press and held the same button, which was the phone button, that allowed us to do answer and disconnect on the same button. So now we have volume up, volume down, nothing, nothing, source, back around to FM. Track up, track down, mute. Now what we want to go ahead and do is plug in the USB and test the CarPlay. All right, so if we press and hold, call Fernando Lopez. Calling Fernando Lopez. Now if we press and hold the phone button, it should disconnect. All right, so it answers, press and hold, and it hangs up. All right, so that's cool. So we know all the steering wheel controls work. So now what we wanna do is go to the main menu and go in, and even though we're not doing a reverse camera, we wanna make sure that's on. We wanna go ahead and give that a test. And it does go into reverse. All right, so that's good. So if and when he decides to do that, that'll be all set and ready to go. So now all we have to do is get this guy into that hole. Remember, push up as high as you can on this. You want this to be up in the dash as tall as possible. All right, so at this point, you should have tested everything and make sure it works. Because um, once this snaps on, it's like you saw us earlier trying to get it off. It's snapped on there. You're really going to have to work to get it off. So, you know, we definitely want to, you definitely want to do all the testing we did just to make sure. Test everything you can think of. The Bluetooth mic, the auxiliary, the USB, anything your radio has. You know, if you're hooking up our subwoofers, make sure the sub works. Make sure everything functions. Then snap this on. Now the only thing you can't test until that goes on is whether the face opens or closes. All right, so that brings this one to a close. You know, I really like this best kit. I mean, we've used the competitor's kit uh, many times. Um, and it's a nightmare. You have to do a lot of grinding and really other than the little pieces we ground on the left and right side of the air conditioner there, that, that was it. I mean I had to cut that one little piece in the top when I pulled down the wiring harness But the radio fit right in there was tons of room um, Yeah, I, I like this kit a lot and it looks nice. I mean it's yeah. it's shiny uh, It fits nice and snug. Man does it fit snug um, So yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. Nice. So uh, if you've got a BMW and you were worried about what yours might look like, well, we hope that you watch this and you feel confident that you can Do either it. have it done or try it yourself. Yeah, definitely. Well, that brings this one to a close, as I already said. So close it for me, yes, will you? So thank you for watching. You guys can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And we do these things five days a week. We also do a Monday night Facebook live show. Yes. What time is that at? Uh, 6 30 Eastern Standard. That's right. You can watch, ask questions. It's real fun. But we won't keep you any longer. You guys have a great night, and we will see you later next time. Bye. All right, so that. <laughs> all right, so that. Yeah. Hey, come Hello. On. <laughs>
All right, so that, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs>